Four. There is more first round action coming your way today, beginning with Pennsylvania against Illinois and Seton Hall against Oregon in the east, while in the south, Louisiana meets Tennessee and UNC Wilmington takes on Cincinnati. Then, later today, Butler meets Florida, Lafayette takes on Temple in the east, while in the south, UNLV tangles with Tulsa and Utah State goes up against UConn. As a player, Clark, would you rather play on the first day or the second day of the tournament? I think I'd rather play on the first day, get it over with, and then if you get your t ticket punch to move on, you can really relax and enjoy the nervous moments for the teams that are going to play on Friday. Whichever day you play, it beats not playing at all, doesn't it? Oh, without question. <laughs> you betcha. Without Coming question. up, everyone will see the tip of Penn, Illinois. Then we'll send those of you slated to see Seton Hall against Oregon to that tip at 1225. For those awaiting UNC Wilmington against Cincinnati and Louisiana against Tennessee, we'll get you to the tips of those games at 1230. Madness 2000 moves on. Enjoy the games, everyone, here on CBS. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Microsoft, Saturn, Enterprise Rent-A-Car, and by Salomon Smith Barney. begins in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Let's fire up the East Region on the home floor of the Wake Forest Demon Deacons, where we begin today with the Ivy League champion, Penn Quakers, against the Fighting Illini of Illinois. Four games here today. We lead off with this one, and we end tonight with the one seed, Duke taking on Lamar. Jim Nance, Billy Packer, courtside, one of our favorite days of the year here, partner. <laughs> Fired up, James. And we've got Michael Jordan here in game one, leading the Penn attack. Appropriate North Carolina, Michael Jordan, but a different guy, but an outstanding player. Michael Jordan was the player of the year in the Ivy League this year. First team all Ivy League the last two years. Great crossover dribble, great strength, an outstanding number two guard. And when you talk about number two guards, Corey Bradford, one of the best in the country. You'll see the only way he got stopped in the Big Ten tournament when Hudson came down and hit him with that elbow. Broke his nose, but watch what determination he has. Came back, and there's that patented jump shot. He is the record holder at Illinois. Coach Fran Dunphy, and in his 11th year as the pin head coach, his team was in the tournament a year ago, led by 11 at halftime against Florida, only to fall out in Seattle to the Gators. His lineup, a freshman on Yikwe, Brown, Owens, strong backcourt with Langle and Jordan. And for the fighting Illini, McLean, Lucas Johnson, surging freshman Cook, Williams, and Bradford, who will not play with a mask today with that broken nose. There's Lon Kruger, third time in four years he's taken Illinois to the NCAA tournament. The Quakers have first possession here. Jim, a horrible toss, and uh, Owens stole the tap. Good move on his part when he saw it was a bad toss. Michael Jordan, McLean on him. McLean's got a lot of size. Jordan should have a quick disadvantage. On Nickwe, the freshman from London with an opening three. This young man, Jim, has played outstanding games against tougher opponents. You see the zone defense. Two, three starting off. Look for Bradford to try to find himself a hole against this zone. They're matching up very high outside. Looks like they'd want to force Illinois to get the ball down inside. Look at how wide out this zone is. Cook comes up short from way outside on Nickway. Clears it for the Quakers. I love the concept by Fran Dunphy against Illinois. Illinois is going to have to go ahead and get Cook down inside or bring Griffin in the game. That zone is really wide. Double up on Langle. In the paint, a traveling violation on Owens. Penn undefeated in Ivy League play this year, 14-0. Overall, second longest win streak in the country. Utah State's win streak will be on the line today, this afternoon, taking on Connecticut. Now watch this defense by Penn. They showed the zone. Now they're playing man-to-man -man the second go-round here. Cook really posts up low, and Owens just a silly foul. Owens on the hold. Senior out of Audubon, New Jersey. Penn showed the 2-3 zone, really put it out high, and then go back to a man-to-man. -man. Now they're back in the zone on the out-of-bounds situation. See if they stay that way. Stay zone. Double up. Get past Johnson, thought about it. Now kicks it back out to Williams. 
McLean. He'll take the jumper. First two for Illinois. They're going to play that zone. That's where it has to be attacked. Right at the foul line there. McLean, not a great scorer or shooter. But he took advantage of it. We saw earlier the pin win streak and early season losses against some top-notch teams. And a whistle and a reach-in on Illinois. Early games at Kentucky, at Auburn, at Temple, losing by only four, and at Kansas, where they were really blown off the floor. Lost by 46, but Jim, when you take a look at the Ivy League, really a two-team league this year with Princeton and Penn. So I think that was great scheduling by Fran Dunphy, realizing he had to get these guys battle-tested, even if they had to go uh, on the road against strong opponents. Owens with the steal, Langle might get another try. Yes, three, yes this time. Bad recovery by Illinois on the missed shot. Langle will take advantage of it. He has tremendous range, first team all Ivy League player. Good size for a two guard. Heads up play by Jeff Owens after the first Langle miss. See, Johnson is filling that hole in the middle. That'll be available. Lane, wow, almost into the, into the first row. Well, if you're expecting Seton Hall or Oregon, we'll be pulling out shortly to get you to the start of that game. Or the Louisiana-Tennessee game, Carolina Wilmington against Cincinnati, all in the early set. Owens is getting good position on Cook down inside, but nobody's delivered the ball so far. Michael Jordan over Bradford, three, rattles out. Well, Jim, you know, I think for Penn, you got a lot of players on the floor that had good games against Florida last year, Langle and Jordan particularly. So it's not like they're not ready to play against quality competition. Frank Williams with a three for Illinois. Illinois, the number four seed in the East, its highest seed since 1989. A team uh, that was a number one seed and went on to the Final Four. Langle, McLean, now battling on this way for the rebound. There's McLean's versatility. Can rebound, can guard multiple players, and so far is shooting the ball well. McLean with four of Illinois' seven. Put them in front for the first time. Jordan got away from McLean, kicks it over, Langle clears out, steps in two. Got to make that shot. Williams not doing the job defensively to recover. Steal. Steal by Brown. No numbers here for Jordan, and he can't catch up to it. Pennsylvania, 9,800. Student body, 18th time in the NCAA tournament. Final four team of 19. 79, where their journey to Salt Lake City in the Final Four really began right through the state of North Carolina. They, they have never beaten, however, Illinois, and there's Cook keeping the ball over his head. Penn doing a nice job on the perimeter in the zone. Penn fans are here. Again, some of you will be leaving us shortly. Get you there for the tip times of your game. South bracket. But right now, let's check in with Bonnie Bernstein. Bonnie? Hi there, Jim. Well, obviously, one of the big stories in this game is the broken nose of Illinois' leading scorer, Corey Bradford. He's going to have surgery on that nose Monday, regardless of how Illinois plays this weekend. But there is a reason why he's not wearing a protective face mask. On Tuesday, with the mask on, Corey fell on his face. And going to the doctor the next day, the doctor said, well, that actually straightened your nose out a little bit. So Bradford said, you know what? It's going to hurt either way. So I'm just not going to wear it. And much of it is May of trainer Rod Cardinal. He left that mask in his hotel room this morning. And that last touch by Illinois, yes, when he fell, I'm talking about, uh, well, there's uh, Rod Cardinal, father of Brian, Brian Cardinal, his son advancing with Purdue, hitting a key shot at the very uh, end of that game yesterday against Dayton. That's got to be kind of tough. A father that's trained in one team has got a son in the tournament on another team. Of course, he's had to go up against his son many times in Illinois, and uh, so far, Brian has really taken advantage of his dad in regard to those matchups. Williams with the jumper. Finished that story on Corey Bradford when he fell on his face. It really did. It jarred him and excruciating pain, but when they went to the doctor, they said, you know, really, the effect was he almost reset it to put it back in place. 
I can think of nicer ways to do that. Yeah, that's not the way you'd want to do it. Seven-point run here by the Fighting Illini. Kapalia in the game right now. Nice matchup that he has on Onikwe. Langle, long range, three. Jim, he's getting excellent looks as Langle, and he's got to make these if Penn's going to stay in the ballgame. Even though Illinois is not a great rebounding team by Big Ten standards, they do have an advantage in this game. Turnaround goes for Marcus Griffin. Nine-point run. Langle's had some good looks, Billy. He's only one for five from the field. Yes, he's got to make these shots to the outside he's been getting. Bradford's on him. He's got height on Bradford. He's taking good spots, just not making open shots. Tough shot. Jordan on Yikwe, flucks it, has it blocked by Kripalia, but they'll say he got a piece of the arm. It might have been Griffin as well, Jim, and, and what we have right here now, Illinois going to their bench, which is extremely deep and very young as well. Uh, they've got guys, as we see Brown coming into the ball game right now, that were starters last year that are getting an opportunity to come off that bench now, so they really have an advantage on Penn in that area. They did call it Billy on Griffin. On Nikua will shoot two. Freshman originally bound for Long Beach State. Born and raised in Nigeria. His father an importer, his mother a doctor. They moved when Uganda was 14 to London. That's where he played basketball for the first time. He signed a letter originally at Long Beach State. Spent a year at a prep school about an hour and a half outside of Philadelphia in Mercersburg. Mercersburg Prep changed his mind. Now well, somebody got to him and talked about the academic environment at Penn. Penn does not recognize, by the way, the letter of intent. The Ivy League does not recognize the letter of intent. That's why he didn't need any relief. It was immediately eligible. Take away the basket, traveling against Williams. Illinois, 36,000 students strong in its 20th NCAA tournament appearance. Four Final Fours, 1949, 51, 52, then a 37-year gap until Lou Henson took him back to Seattle, Final Four, 1989. In a matchup with Michigan, the eventual champion that they had beaten twice during the regular year, but couldn't make it there. Good pickoff by Griffin. Harrington in the game, an outstanding shooter. Harrington with the three. Jordan Hoyes hit six in a row from the field. Now what we're seeing right now is Illinois bench coming off there and, and coming in with an attitude. A lot of fresh bodies. Lon Kruger made the change in his career from Florida to Illinois four years ago this week, March 21st, 1996. After really bringing life into the Florida program, a school that was 7 and 21 before he went to Florida, and in his fifth year, he took him to the Final Four in Charlotte, 1994. Well, when you think that he took over a Kansas State team that was last in the league before he got there, the, one of the great program builders. And Jim, you know, I guess we could call this particular site the program builder site. We've got Pat Kennedy who's taken three different teams to the NCAA tournament. Mike Dean has taken three different teams to the NCAA tournament. And Lon Kruger has as well. I bet you that's never happened before that they were all in the same site. Well, there have only been 26 coaches in, in, the, history. in the history that right. have taken three teams to the NCAA tournament. Three of the 26 are here. Blocked by Illinois. 12 nothing run by the Illini. Griffin with a nice pickoff defensively. I really think that I like the way Penn was playing defensively to start this game in that spread out 2-3 zone. They have no way they're going to match up man-to-man -man against Illinois. Marcus Griffin with the turnaround. Of course, when you get behind, even though it's early in the game, I think you've got to be patient with that zone. 14 unanswered. And Kripalia with the steal. Make it 16 in a row. Onikwe wanted to grab him and couldn't do it. Kapalia too strong. Kapalia, as you can remember, Jim, had a great Big Ten tournament. He's a guy that uh, they say fundamentally does some things that uh, within the framework of the team is not what they want, but he has that ability to come in as a free spirit and make things happen. Oh, Jordan. Jordan have an angle. Hard time getting looks so far today. Brown on him now. A 
Owens nice. backs away and fade away jumper goes. You notice there was no doubling down there whatsoever. They expected Griffin to stay right with him. A good step away that time by Owens. They had had 11 in a row empty trips. 11 straight before the basket by Owens. Breaks a 16 point run by Illinois. The fighting Illini leads by 10. We're back in Winston-Salem. Let's check now the Microsoft data bank. The last Big Ten team to win an NCAA championship, Michigan, 1989. During the 90s, there were six Final Four appearances by the Big Ten from five programs. Two for Michigan, Indiana went five once. twice. Minnesota went once. Ohio State and Michigan State last year. But no Big Ten titles in the 90s out of the six Big Ten appearances in the Final Four. Not since 89 and the Wolverines with Steve Fisher, interim coach at the time. There's a nice double team by Penn. Very aggressive man-to-man. -man. Tough break for Fran Dumphy's team to come out of that timeout. Pick up with an aggressive man-to-man -man defense and they get a cheap foul out of it. He is hot with those officials too. Outstanding player at LaSalle. Played on one of the great LaSalle teams. Compare any two players in the tournament. Find out who has the edge. Player matchup feature. Check out Mark Mayhem at cbs.sportsline.com or America Online. Keyword CBS Sports Line. There's that man-to-man -man tough and Kapaya with a walk. Excellent move. There you have two young men from Europe going head-to-head -head against each other, Jim. Kapalia, Kapitanovic, who is checked in now with the Penn Quakers. He's got into the ball game with Brown. Has a little advantage, and he got hit in the face. No call by the official. It gets called for a turnover. Brown's got a lot of size on him and power. David Klatsky, just a freshman from Holmdel, New Jersey. Not turnover prone, but commits one that time. But Jim, there is a big drop-off between Penn and Princeton in the Ivy League and the rest they play against. So let's be quite honest. For the last, what would you say, two months, Penn has not faced these kind of athletes. And it, and it really is affecting them. Now their job right now as a team is to stay in this game and try to turn it into as much a half-court game as they can to stay close, get their bearings, and then be ready to go in the second half. Michael Jordan has picked up a second foul. Lucas Johnson comes back into the Illinois lineup. We saw Michael Jordan in the game against Kentucky. First time I got a chance to watch him play on that murderous stretch of games they had. Saul Smith did a great job. Desmond Allison did a great job on him as well. He just could not get anything going. Is that his turn? That is. They got him on a blocking foul. Third, Jordan's third. He'll be sitting down, and this really makes things tough for Penn. As we mentioned, the Ivy League Player of the Year had an outstanding game last year against Ford in the first round of which Penn lost, scoring 15 points. But he's going to be sitting a long time here in this uh, first half now. He's going to go 11 minutes and 13 seconds and not get back in. Bradford misses the jumper. Brown rebound. Jordan did not score. 0 for 1 from the field and three fouls on the Ivy League Player of the Year. Good defense by Brown. Koski just can't get by him. Illinois had made eight straight from the field before that last miss. Kapitanovich needs some help. He'll go back out. Langle, last touch by Harrington. 12 on the shot clock. Jim, I'm going to make a statement. I don't know if it's true, but I'm just thinking around the country. I don't know if anybody has a better second five than does Illinois. Well, you know, they don't put anybody on the floor. It's not a pretty good Division I basketball player. Langle baseliner short. He's having a tough day from the field. Bradford hasn't really gotten on track. There he puts up a three that really...